Point shooting. Is it a myth? No. Can you use it effectively? Absolutely. Should you spend a lot of time practicing it in isolation? No, I don't think so. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and thanks to Giovanni Silva for uh, pinging me about this to actually make this video. I haven't been uh, making videos for a while, I'm working on a book. Yet another iteration of my performance journal, The Solutions in Lenny Basham's Terms, a ways to improve different aspects of my shooting. So I'm putting this thing now into a text format by using a kind of neuroscience-backed approach that I am stealing from these three books and some additional research on uh, scientific articles that I found from these three books and uh, research a little bit more. The first one, the one that started it all, is The Talent Code, Deep Practice by Daniel Coyle. Absolutely genius book, you should have it. The second one is Atomic Habits. You might think it's kind of weird habits and lifestyle and just being productive has anything to do with shooting. In my opinion, there's no big difference between a habit and a skill. It's all just a circuit, so this actually applies. In the talent code, Daniel Coyle covers a lot about the myelination, the process of optimizing your neural circuits in your pathways, and how it increases your speed over time. Practice makes perfect. But there's not much information or practical theory, because he visits a lot of talent hotbeds and different athletes, musicians, the most successful coaches, and tries to analyze why their approaches are so much better than everybody else's. So he suggests that myelination is behind all that, and I agree with this, but it does not explain, at least to me, how the initial skill is being built, how it's being taught. And for that, I think what we need to use is the neuroplasticity, the actual changes in connections between neurons. So myelination just makes two neurons connect faster. And also, there are a lot of things, affects timing, but mostly it just makes your neural pathway faster and more efficient and neuroplasticity allows you to actually learn new things. And for that thing, how the brain learns, David A. Uh, Sosa, <laughs> this is like one of the first editions and it was in 1990s something. And the most recent edition happened uh, after Corona, like after 2020. For some reason, really hard to find the most recent edition on Amazon. So uh, be warned, you need the sixth. This is basically what I'm doing and uh, what I'm trying to use to better understand my methods and much more successful and better shooters methods and to build a framework that then can be shared and tested by different shooters you including my subscriber thank you <laughs> for being here so yeah that's why i was not making videos i was not even practicing a lot uh lately i kind of want to write this book for myself then read it then i can finally practice so the experiment is ongoing thanks for being here thanks for witnessing all that and uh hey we hit thousand subscribers recently that's kind of surprising Thanks everybody, let's try to hit a 2000 and we will do a giveaway. Uh, let's do like three people, uh, top three commenters, public subscribers. When we hit 2000, first place 300 rounds with a gift card, second place 200 rounds and then third 100 rounds. Uh, just keep it small, I don't make any money of this. Uh, this is purely hobby and just giving back to the community because I like shooting and I like second amendment. No stuff on snack. Okay, uh, now back to the video. Point shooting, weird stuff. I don't subscribe to these words, point shooting. When I started shooting, I was trying to practice it by basically doing this at a static range. When I, after I normally shot, I would go bang, bang, bang. And it actually connected. So I was like, oh, point shooting is a thing, it works. Now that I'm a little bit more experienced, I realize that there's more than just visual aim, especially when you use a dot. It becomes apparent pretty quick. This is why I recommend to use dot for everyone and not to occlude it with big suppressor sights. And I recommend also having as big of a window of a dot as you can because these little misalignments that will put the dot to the edge of your window, like they will just steal information from you if your window is small, it's already out and you don't know where it is. If you have a bigger window, you know it's there and you can do corrections so you have information. So, one of the theories I have is what is shooting at high level and I call it subconscious predictive optimistic indexing. It's subconscious because it's fully automated and uh, it's running by its own. You don't need to consciously engage in that activity. It's predictive because you blend things together, you have flow and you're trying to start one action before the other stop. So for example, I can be leaning out of a position and finishing a few shots. Or when I transition to the target, I can predict that because I have muscle memory and I have experience that if I do this, I will be on target. So I can start prepping the trigger sooner. And when the dot is somewhere within the target, I know that the last milliseconds of my re-index on that target in transition are gonna happen together successfully with the trigger press and I can just go through with it. I don't have to go on target and then wait, oh yeah, I'm within the target, I know for sure, and then click. I don't have to shoot reactively anymore. 
I can shoot predictively. I need to minimize time, I need to reduce hesitation, I need to build flow, I need to remove delays. This is what's building speed, or good time rather, in action shooting sports. You become faster by not shooting faster. You become faster by shooting sooner, by removing delay, removing hesitation, being optimistic. So this is why it's optimistic. So subconscious, predictive, optimistic, indexing. What is indexing? Indexing is simple. You can point at something. At first you can do it just with your index finger, but when we have a gun, now your platform looks like this that you index with, and your gun and its mechanical characteristics actually provide you with an offset. Different gun might have different offset. You might notice when you go from something like a Glock to something like 1911 that your sight's now a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but they're still centered horizontally. This is just an, an offset. Your index is already there, you just need to remember, oh, there's a new offset. I just go a little bit high, a little bit up. You do it a little bit in dry fire, then you go, ba -ba, and it's just there. All you did is you remembered a new offset, it's a variable, but your indexing function remained the same. Now, indexing function, I divide it in two things. First one is when you already have an index and you just keep holding it. And this is what Live Fire 101 is. Uh, check out my Live Fire 101 video where we shoot the same target once, twice, or six times with weak-handed, strong-handed, and freestyle. What this gives you, it works your index hold and recoil control with one, with one part of your shooting platform, then with another, then combines them together. One of the important aspects to this, to make this actually work, is what I call a quality of shooting platform. I kind of covered it a little bit in the grip and recoil control video, uh, the big one with dumb music, it has a non-music version. So check this out, the links are in the description below. Basically, when you're doing a draw, before the draw itself, the quality of your shooting platform is zero. When you obtain a grip, you meet the hands, but you did not extend yet, you have some quality of your shooting platform, but your recoil control is gonna be like bad. And if you try to, like let's say I see the dot like this, and I actually try to index with it, it's not gonna be very predictive, because I rarely practice like this, it's not fully there. But when I go to full quality of shooting platform, now I know where my dot will appear. All I need to do is look at the target, make the dot happen to be there, and press the trigger. I'm literally predicting things because when the quality of a shooting platform is high, ideally it needs to be 100%, I have all these cached, all this cached data that I can look at something and make the dot appear there. And the dot helps a lot because the dot does not need to be aligned. It has much bigger margin of error and it has no parallax, so you don't do ray casting. So this is why I'm saying that dot is better than the irons, and you don't have to practice point shooting. Use your sights, use your dot, ideally, as your training tool, because if you try to push speed just slightly outside of your comfort zone, for the draw, for example, the dot will tell you how things are actually happening. You will see some error, you will learn by that error. Uh, there's a lot of theory behind how we learn, but basically we learn by making tiny mistakes that are just slightly outside of perfect execution. This is why pushing speed is important. This is why GM26 approach works, the cone of accuracy, all that. Literally what happens inside of your brain uses chemicals, dopamine, to code for an error. So your base levels are gonna stay normal and you do something and you expect a reward. If you get more reward, like let's say you push like crazy and you just happen to see the dot there and just go bang, high reward. So higher than you expected, you have a dopamine peak. If you miss, you have dopamine dip. The neurotransmitters are the chemicals that affect the synapses, the connections between neurons. And when something happens uh, with these things, it might affect your neural pathways. Your bad neural pathways, when you have a negative error, will be burned, and, or at least will be marked as, this is not an efficient way to go. And your positive pathways that resulted in positive error will be marked like, hey, that worked, we, we need to fire this more. Then, when you start firing the more successful path more, there's this thing called myelin that wraps uh, the nerves everywhere in your body, including your brain especially, and that is basically an insulation, and that allows your neurons to fire more often and faster, and it reduces the amount of signal that is being lost to the environment, which might create noise for other neurons, things like that. So basically, at first, you need to learn the skill and kind of create very weak neural pathway. Then you need to start slowly practicing it and starting noticing mistakes. And using these mistakes, you create a table of this is bad, this is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad, this is good. And then when you get there, like for example, you are really good with your draw and you can go fast with the draw and you hit an alpha. Let's take a little step now. 
Let's do the same thing, but now do at the same time one step back. So I'm gonna do like this and then trailing. And I want to fire when this foot is still in the air. It's much harder now. Before it was hitting an alpha for a target that looks like, so it's like 10 feet, one fourth scale, so it's like 40 feet. Before static, I was getting an alpha when I was talking to you during the drop. Now, and it's a skunk. Now I was getting like a deep Charlie, if not a Delta. So it's a, it's a mic on that target. So now I can use this, maybe slow down a little bit if this error is too much, and learn how to actually do this. And the error is gonna happen all the time. It's not just when I actually fire the shot, right? Now I slow down because I saw the dot being not where I wanted to go. So I put an interruption in the process and that was marked as an error. Like, now I had a mic. So a lot of these things, the brain is a living tissue. It has all these dopamine spikes and dips. All of these things will be marking error positive or error negative. And this will create your neural pathways. But what I'm saying is by using this error focused approach, which is the core principle actually of deep practice, you are teaching by using your visuals, your proprioception to result in a faster behavior, faster actions on a stage. Does this make it that you're using or learning to use point shooting all the time? It kind of does. Even though you are always using your sights, you are just trying to get the maximum you can out of this process, which I call subconscious predictive optimistic indexing. And if we go to a stage and it's like a big stage, 32 rounds, and they're like multiple positions, some shooting on the move, something else, really all you have is this subconscious predictive optimistic indexing starting on the first target when you first build your quality of shooting platform then you have trigger manipulation and then everything else you're just using the index the full body index to just put the gun where it needs to be it's the gun that earns the score it's the gun that gets the points it's the gun that's being timed you are behind the gun you're just setting it up for success so literally all you're doing is you keep pressing the trigger and you are doing it when the gun is indexed on the target. Preferably in the alpha zone. Preferably on the required number of shots. So this process is just ghost. And all we really have is trigger manipulation and subconscious predictive optimistic indexing. And by indexing, I mean, when you have the draw, you're establishing an initial index. When you do a transition, you already have an index somewhere and you're just changing it to another place. When you're going for reload, you break your index a little bit, but not fully, and then you rebuild it on the same target or somewhere else. Depends if it's a classifier or whatever. When you move, you keep your index relative to your body the same, and then you just orient your body towards some other target. There's really not much difference in transitions and movement for me now on the USPSA stages, because what is the transition? It's orienting your shooting platform from one target to another using your non-shooting platform. Because my shooting platform, like the core muscles and up, I try to keep that after I have a draw 100% the same and static. So if you look like turret transition, I keep all this engaged, the head stays in the same place, the dot, the gun stays in the same place relative to my eyes, and all am I doing is just using my lower body to orient my upper body just the way the target just happens to be where my dot is. And this is literally all it is. Now, how do you build it? As I said, you try to use deep practice methods. You try to push a little bit outside of your comfort zone. And at first you start deliberate and slow to build the initial pathway. And then you can optimize that pathway if it works by just doing it again and again and again. If you have a perfect practice, it will make you perfect. Although there's no such thing as perfect practice really. And you use the mistakes, the little errors that happen, with positive mindset, understanding that if you're hitting a mistake, if you're having a mic, if you don't have char, if you have Charlie instead of Alpha, all that stuff, and if you maintain the positive attitude, positive mindset, your brain will learn that something was unoptimal. You don't even necessarily have to, let's say, have one or two or three perfect uh, executions, slower or whatnot, because something that was inefficient in your pathway will be automatically marked as, as a bad one. And you just kind of need to focus on shooting, again, optimistically and predictively. Learn how to feel how it feels. Like focus on doing and not thinking when you're shooting. So when it happens, it does not go into your conscious. Your conscious is not going to be really used in shooting because shooting as a skill is completely subconscious. All skills are completely subconscious. 
There's no such thing as a thought. There's no such thing as words or letters. We don't use that when we're shooting. So suppress all that, have a very slight positive emotional background and use that suppressed human brain, suppressed monkey brain. So thoughts, emotions, thoughts completely suppressed, emotions suppressed and maintain slight positive background because it's important for learning and memories and consolidating all that stuff. And then just stay in the lizard and just observe, don't judge, just do. If the error happened and it happens all the time exactly the same, maybe go do some programming debugging. So you, you see an error, now go into subjective slow motion. Do exactly the same as it was before. When I go subjective slow motion and it works perfectly, even though I'm going slow, I have exactly the same error. So all I need to do is slow down and feel what's going on and make a correction. And now do it again a little bit more, a few times with the same slow motion and understand how correction works, but understand it not consciously, just subconsciously. And then you can go full speed, see another error if you're working that subjective slow motion, programming debugging. I know it's a huge topic. This video was meant to be a quick one, probably already like 20 minutes. I will try to edit it into something shorter, but I hope that gives some additional insight into uh, my thought process about point shooting, proprioceptive versus visual aim, and how these things are actually combined together and how everything is just a circuit. After all, our visuals, the actual information coming from the eyes are really bad. It's like noisy, it has dead spots where your nerve connects, the retinas are not, very high resolution all that and really what our vision is it's the mental representation that our brain builds of the environment when uh, it combines all these inputs together so the eyes continue scanning you have multiple frames that are being combined you build a 3d environment because you have two eyes so if it's all fake if it's all a mental model if it's just a construct create another construct how it feels when you have alphas how it feels to have a good quality of shooting platform, how it feels pushing slightly outside of your comfort zone, seeing more additional errors, and how it feels when you're bothered by them and when you remember them and make your neural pathways just slightly more efficient. This is my approach to proprioceptive aim and point shooting. It probably sounds really weird, but I hope it helps at least a few people. Let me know in the comments if it did, and if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them here, or we'll do a follow-up video. This is a really hard topic to describe and to put in the video. And this is why it's going to be like multiple chapters in the book. I'm still fixing it and making it more, making it easier to understand stuff like that. But anyway, thanks for, uh, if, if, you still, if you're still here, you're the real G. Thanks for watching.